Hello, welcome to uh, another problem session. This is a very standard problem um, uh, it, and it goes by what is called a um, physical pendulum. So uh, and it has many applications. This problem itself has many applications. You have a rod here and a disc here. You could have a sphere here. You could have a human being just swinging a monkey swinging, um, a guitar swinging, or any physical object that's uh, swinging about is uh, this. This models everything. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, it's a good good problem to understand. Uh, now, to understand this problem completely, you need uh, to have a, a couple of background material. So, in the background. Uh, that you need is a regular pen, uh, pendulum, plane pendulum, uh, and that's a, a point mass, say a little m, and this length l. Uh, and if you set up the angle equation of motion here, so you'll get d squared theta dt square, and you get something here a uh, minus sign and a theta for a small angle theta is small you get equation like this and you get equation like this because on the right side this theta comes from used to be sine theta and sine theta is you can replace sine theta by theta uh, when theta is small, this is linear approximation. So when you have this equation, then the this gives the period. Uh, uh, this particular thing over here is actually angular frequency. It is that box, and so frequency is uh, square root of that box, and period is two pi over omega so it gets 2 pi over square root of box so in a way we're supposed to get a uh, this problem is about actually getting the box getting this equation for uh, this problem so that's background one so you ha if you have an equation like this period will come out to be that so background number two uh, for background uh, number two is what is called parallel axis theorem. What you need uh, parallel axis theorem is uh, suppose I have uh, some uh, object and I this is the center of mass, we know center of mass, and there is an axis uh, uh, about which I know uh, if this was the uh, this is center mass axis, uh, and I know moment of inertia of this object about this axis, okay? So let's say I zero. So this is I zero, or I, I cm, so to say, I cm. And then I want to know its moment of inertia about this axis, which is parallel. So this axis, I want to know what if I did this entire thing about that, uh, then what will be the this entire thing uh, about this object rotating about this this new axis, which is parallel to that axis. So this I axis will be this guy, whatever formula you have for this axis, plus as if the entire mass, this whole all mass is placed at a distance at the CM, see the point mass. So plus M, let's see distance be aired d be the distance between the axis md square 
So you will need that. So this this to as a background. So now I suppose you have this thing as a background, and I will do the problem. Okay. So now we go back to our problem uh, to actually set it up. So uh, we are going to set it up about this point O, uh, and uh, this will be the uh, axis. Vertical line will be the ax, one of the axes. And we're going to set up um, equation of motion about uh, this axis. Uh, so, so let's call this uh, x-axis, y-axis, and we have a z-axis which is coming out. So if you look at it, it's actually rotating about the z-axis. So th this is the axis of of rotation. Uh, <clears throat> so th this, uh, if you if you take that as a positive uh, sense of rotation, uh, we'll just take that as a positive sense of rotation. So we have an angle here. Uh, so that's the angle uh, at this point. Is that's a positive angle going on the other side will be a negative value of the angle. So this, this is the positive angle, and if it swings on that side, this is a negative value of the angle. Okay, so that's a, a notation for things. Uh, let's let's uh, see what uh, uh, the tau equals to i alpha becomes. Okay, now disk uh, all of this everything is one system. This whole thing is rotating as one system, so that means uh, alpha is the same, same for the entire rigid body. So I don't have to think of alpha for this and alpha for that. So there's not a separate alpha. No, alpha for this, alpha for rod. Okay, so it's the entire rigid body, uh, which is rod plus disc. Okay. All right. Um, this will be a moment of inertia of of the entire rigid body. All right. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> and the tau will be. Uh, torque of all forces on this. Uh, so, all of all external forces. Now that I understand each topic here, uh, let's uh, look at uh, what alpha is. So, if I have a theta as a function of time, say say this is at some time t, then alpha is simply d squared theta dt square okay so that's that's what that will be uh, let's look at i i will be um, <clears throat> rod uh, if let's look at uh, this axis so for rod this is the center and about this axis the formula for rod is 1 over 12 ml square. So about this parallel axis, uh, formula for rod will be, so uh, let me take a uh, more bright color. I rod about axis, let's call it axis A. Axis A will be this 1 over 12 ml square plus little m and the distance is l over 2. The distance between that and that is l over 2. It's l over 2 square. So that's for rod. How about the disk? Uh, the disk, uh, the axis that I know the formula about is this parallel axis. This is the center of mass of disk. So this axis, uh, I disk, 
about uh, this axis is going to be 1 over 2 mass of the disk radius square. So uh, the distance between these I want over this axis. So from here to here is entire L. So what we have I of disk about A is 1 over 2 m r square uh, plus uh, its mass l square. Now the net i will be sum of these two, i is sum of these two. Okay, <clears throat> how about torque? To get torque, I need to identify forces where they're acting. So there is a uh, let's go over forces now. Uh, I'm going to get a nice color like that. Okay. So uh, let's get another color. So th there will be at the center of mass you have mg. Over here, uh, center of the rod you have rod's weight, little mg. Uh, these are the only external forces uh, that are away from the axis and on the axis uh, because the center of mass of this rigid body is not accelerating uh, uh, in, a, uh, in a way but uh, so there has to be a support here some normal force that's balancing everything right uh, so yeah, th there is a if the center of mass over here is a little bit acceleration of the center of mass, uh, which means the normal force here is actually changing, you know, at different points. I'm not going to write down anything. Just call it normal force through this point. Its uh, its direction is uh, clearly, uh, if you look at it, uh, center of mass, yeah, that's a good point. Let's just go over that a little bit. The center of mass of the body then is depends on the forces right so if if this is going in a circular motion which means the acceleration of center of mass is that way right <clears throat> so you have this force this force this force so th this normal force uh, uh, that's over there uh, along with uh, mg and mg is causing this acceleration so that's that's the direction of that normal force but it's still at this point. I don't have to really know that. You can actually make a mistake and completely omit N and it still be okay. Because the or torque of the normal force is zero. I don't need to know its direction, okay? Uh, and L uh, on, the, on the rod, this one is going to be at L over two distance from here. But then that's not the lever arm. Lever arm is gonna be that distance. So if this is theta, that same distance is that. Uh, so tau of little mg uh, is magnitude was is going to be uh, uh, mg mg times L over 2 sine theta. But then direction wise, this guy is going this and that's the direction sense. But positive is that way so this is going to be negative and uh, tau of capital M mg uh, is very similar and its lever arm is going to be that distance which is same as that distance and it's going to be again the sense is that way so it's going to come out to be negative very important sign here capital mg l sine theta so now I have all of the pieces and let me put together uh, and so I'm going to write this guy on, on the left side now. So I have, uh, let's, let's call, let's call this I, this whole thing, just keep, keep it as I, okay? So I have an I d square theta over dt square and on the right side angle is small so I'm going to replace this with a theta 
and replace this with a theta so the box side uh, it's going to be minus mg l over 2 plus capital mg l and theta so divide by i i'll get the box right so uh, divide by i over here and that's the box so t will be um, 2 pi over square root of this box stuff it's going to be a very ugly looking equation uh, because we didn't really uh, put a lot of simplifications here uh, but uh, that's the answer okay I hope uh, uh, this helps you understand parallel axis theorem and and um, how to uh, make use of parallel axis theorem when you encounter so this was a illustration of parallel axis theorem I'm not going to go over the whole problem again uh, maybe you can rewind and go over this uh, uh, and look at uh, look at the parts that was not clear to you. Okay, talk later. Bye.